effect, effect, effect. Uh, effect. <laughs> Gentlemen, good morning. So, how you doing? I just rolled out of bed. So. Oh, really? A little, a little sluggish after eating breakfast. Nice. You know, I, I feel like I always record better when I don't eat. I yeah. Don't yeah. Stomach. Yeah. Well, you did a McDonald's breakfast, right? Yeah, actually, it was, it was crazy. So I got a. I got a sausage biscuit and then I got the McGriddle meal and then I put a piece of cheese on the sausage biscuit, nuked it for like 19 seconds and dude, it was better than the McGriddle. Wow. But also I think the biscuit was like just freshly made because mm. you know how sometimes you get like the biscuits and they're really like just hard as hell. You're like, hell. yeah, yeah. So it was, a, it was gamble, but also I haven't had Rick Tall's breakfast in a long time. So it was, it was it was enjoyable. Probably won't do it for like another like six months. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Get some of the donuts. It was good. Donuts. It was good. If donuts you have there? breakfast. Yeah, they had like these little glazed donut things. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, I did I did just sausage and toast, but like I have been doing this thing where it's kind of similar to what you're talking about, Randy. Where like I'll get a piece of bread, like sandwich bread but i'll cut it so it's only like this this big yeah. right and i'll put some sausage in there like grilled sausage links and then cheese and then hot sauce mm -hmm. and then so there's just like this melty cheesy oily spicy goodness and uh yeah but yeah. i gotta be i can't make those all the time because it's obviously really bad for you yeah what kind of hot I, sauce? I usually make i like making breakfast i usually make breakfast but um uh, yeah i just didn't i didn't have i ran out of english muffins and i made breakfast burritos yesterday so i don't want to eat breakfast burritos again so yeah. but i love making the english muffin you know uh some eggs sausage or bacon and slice some american cheese on that bitch yeah toasted it i toast the uh english muffin with the little mayo on there oh it's so good so good little egg cups i made the other day are actually really good though that's I, I was telling a lady i'm like i need like the egg cups like what you're referencing to because then it would just prevent the uh because i just unless i'm doing like a sunny side up prevents the scrambled eggs from like falling out mm. and that's like the benefit i'm like yeah or i could just cut out a piece of plastic or metal <laughs> i think yeah. i think i got like a, i think i have like a one of those uh, presses for like cookies when you like have dough, like, oh, I can make a star, I can make a snowman. I was like, yeah, I could probably just use this. <laughs> for eggs, yeah. For eggs, yeah. I mean, it would work, you know? Yeah. That's funny. So, so uh, real quick, just to answer your question, it's, uh, I think it's called Oh Brothers Hot Sauce. I have, I have, I will not buy anything else. It's just yeah. so good. And I could, I couldn't find it anywhere. I'll send you the link. But they they have like three packs on Amazon, so like I just like been slowly going through that, and it's just it's the right level of flavor and uh, heat. <sighs> but anywho, Randy, sorry, I have a uh, bunch of things written down from from the text message lane. Just but I just want to like really quick uh, Panda Express. Mm, okay, I love it. I love so, it so haven't had Panda Express in probably. Like two years no nah, that's a lie probably a year and yeah i don't think like, i've had it in like three years i just want to take you through like this terrible like it wasn't terrible i mean it was all good at the time but just like this really unhealthy uh -oh. dinner that we had so we go see dr strange and then like all right let's get nachos <laughs> because they do loaded nachos now like guacamole and everything at the theater at the theater they have like a this whole updated menu like let's get the nachos get a soda and i was and i told myself man, i don't really want to i want to get a hot dog because one six bucks mm -hmm. which is, like, i would still pay for uh two i'm like i don't want to load up and eat movie theater food for dinner <laughs> like, this yeah, was, yeah 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 like, i was like man the nachos so we were leaving and i was like you know what? i just want some chinese food i don't want to go to a fucking restaurant where you're going to have this drop like 60 bucks, you know, respectfully, 
you can sure. get like X amount of dishes. So I'm like, fuck it, let's just go to uh, Panda. And I really dislike going to Panda. Not that the food's like super terrible. I just don't like the environment. Where's and where's the Panda in Warner Park? Uh, it's across from Target. That's so, right. Yeah. Okay. So we go in there. Yeah. So it's right next to the theater. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. So we go in there. It's busy. Um, but for whatever reason, I just started looking at the prices. And I was like, I felt like this shit was more expensive. Like, like I was like well, first blown away about how much it cost after the end because it was a lot less than what I thought it was actually going to be. Sure. Uh, I came out to like, I got a, a box three meal, the lady got like a box two meal, and then we got a double order crab ragoons. And crab ragoons were very moderately priced, if anybody wants to know. It's like two bucks for three. Basically just cream cheese and fried wonton. It's fried wonton. Yeah, yeah. So good. <laughs> and then so, but it came out to like $24. And I was like, what? This is fucking insane. Like, yeah. kind of like the sheer amount of food that I had. And I was thinking to myself, like, man, if we did this on DoorDash, this would have been well over 50 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like 100%. And then so, obviously, like, I was already had the nachos. I kind of wanted to go home and drink a little bit. And what really just kind of my surprise is uh, how fresh the food actually tasted. I know they're cooking it, like, all, like, right there. But I was just kind of blown away. I'm like, huh. Because I got the, uh, I got some, like, stream beans and chicken. Then I got, like, the, uh. The, sh- the sh- honey shrimp and the honey chicken or whatever. I'm so like, that's you, obviously just gonna be deep fried. Do you understand why I go to Panda a lot now? But they, but like, don't there's a but. Like, there's a but in the story, and I'm waiting it's for it. Good, it's good. I think it's very valuable for that price point. But I also like it's good because, like, but it's Americanized. It's just yeah, very I heavily don't. Americanized. So like, consider it Chinese food. It, like that, like. I, I know when I was saying Chinese food to a lady, I was like, ah, is it Chinese? But it was just like, it's like, I was, I, I was impressed for, for what I got and the price that it was like, there was actually really isn't like a negative, I, I guess to say, oh. but my, but I was just, for whatever reason, I felt like all the other times that I've gone to Panda and I'm ordering by myself or whatever, it comes out to like 25 bucks or 30 bucks. But it's just, it was a, it was a good value and it's a good amount of food. Quick, like, that's really what I can say. Quick tip: if you go to their website and order delivery from there, you pay the actual prices and not DoorDash prices. God, yeah. But they still use DoorDash. That's smart because you know when we were because we DoorDash McDonald's like I don't want to drive and ladies like I don't care shit I'm not driving I'm like okay yeah. and I'm looking at the price like God dude. Because I've gone to McDonald's in recent months and just I look at the pricing, even though I get all the same shit, I'm like, man, this shit's like two dollars more expensive. Mm-hmm. Every item's like two dollars more. And then all of a sudden that dollar large soda is now a dollar thirty. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about this. But that was just my little quick panda. Um yeah, it was it was decent. It was good. Interesting. Yeah, and I ate everything. I will say Naturally. I wish they would start changing up more stuff. Because they've had like four or five items that's been on there forever. Like I, I would like to see. Like they used to have a black pepper chicken that was really, really good. Yeah, yeah. So um, naturally, everybody's drawn to the really basic shit: uh, orange chicken, orange yeah, chicken. chicken, orange chicken. That's good though. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't get it because I'm like, it's like I'm gonna get the deep fried shrimp and deep fried this, but. Mm. And everybody's drawn to that, so I'm like, yeah, it's very basic. Um, but they, I think they need a little bit more leaner, leaner food that isn't deep fried. So, like, so when I ate the string beans and the chicken, it was, like, fresh. It was hot. And I'm like, man, I know there's a lot of oil in here, but damn, it's good. <laughs> that crunch. Uh, but, yeah, I – yeah, if they had some fucking chicken wings in there, that'd be good. But They used know. to have hot and sour soup, but then they took that away because they're mean – yeah, man. You know, I crave soup. I crave uh, like Chinese style soup. But then I know I'm gonna drink later, so I'm like, I don't really want to load up on soup. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Drink. Like... So off of that topic, do you think <laughs> Chinese places like Dynasty, China Village, do you think they're more Americanized? Uh, not not China Village. No. No, because um. You know, obviously, you know my family, uh, but 
they well my my family says uh they follow the chef mm. like so there's like there's obviously like a like I, I would say it's probably like a pair or a duo you know like I'm not, i don't know i've never been in the back of a chinese kitchen but i would say it's a duo um, i want to go in the back of a chinese i don't want to i don't want to know of like they're obviously from china authentic and they're cooking like authentic chinese food so like if i was to go to uh Mm. well let's say dynasty for example and you go get like you can tell you can do a basic simple test mm. extremely simple test get some chow fun or chow mein from one place and go get chow fun or chow mein from another place you're gonna notice the difference the taste difference like, mm. that's just what it is so you're gonna notice like this tastes way better like all right here's a real uh, i don't want to throw is it how the noodles is prepared i don't know i don't i'm not, i don't I'm, I'm terrible at making it so um so for an example if you go to china chef like miss bird's restaurant way different it's probably like the, it's it's not it's i mean i get it because like hey this is quantity she's giving me like fucking she's giving me like 80 dollars worth of food for 40 bucks but the quality isn't like there yeah. sure uh, it's kind of like Sol Azteca down the street, Mexican restaurant. It super doesn't taste authentic for shit, but then you could go down the street, go to this taco truck, I'll get like three tacos for like half the price. And all of a sudden, like, damn, this tastes so much better. Right. Like, yeah. So you got to yeah. follow the chef or it. follow the cook. But I, without a doubt, I'll say China Village is the best Chinese place around here. Like, I love China you know, Village. It's so fucking good. My, my family still goes to China Delight. By Walmart Market. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. They used to be really good, but now it's just the owner, the guy cooking. And I don't know if he's, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, from anymore. from from back in the day or years ago, man, that was, yeah, really good food. I just never went there because it was across town for me. Yeah. Actually, Bert, you know that little spot next to Domino's Chinese yeah. place? Yeah, that place closed down. No. Yeah, that sucks. sucks. Like, yeah, I, I would. They, they were pretty good. I, I, they, they were, were good, good. Yeah, yeah, they were good. I got a lot of their soup because <laughs> whenever because it was close. I'm like, I hate Fuzhou next to Oliver's. I hate that place. Oh, I think dude, there's their dicks. The prices change. Like, just you're looking at one price on the paper, and then the next year you're getting hand billed. It's different. I'm like, huh. We ordered. Yeah. We ordered delivery one time, or no. I don't know if it was delivery or pickup, but anyways, we ordered. I got home. Order was we we're missing a couple things and we yeah. got like they switched our order or something. I don't know. Yeah. And I called them and I was like, hey, we ordered this, this, and they're like arguing. No, you didn't. I'm like, all right, cool. See ya. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't want to like, 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 I don't like it. Well, anyway, I'm moving from Chinese food. Uh, what you got? <laughs> okay, I have a couple things uh based off your text. I have one from each of you. I have Randy's point that he wanted to bring up and Dalton's point that he wanted to bring up. So keeping on the subject of food, True. let's stick with Randy's first. Sandoz. Okay, so we all worked in and out. We all layer our, well, I, I layer uh, bun, produce, meat, cheese, bun. So I would make my Sandoz like that however for whatever, interesting yeah so however i recently <laughs> these past three days i went back i'm like i need to start making some sandwiches you know because you know stuff's getting expensive like yep yep can't go spend 12 bucks a day on a sandwich and a bag of chips it's just kind of like when i could spend that amount of money and make like a week's worth of sandos yeah um so i did it differently i did it like Bun, meat, salami, lettuce, tomatoes, cheese. And I did it that way. And it tasted like just so much better. Like, I don't know why, but it was like so much better. And then the lady was like, all you're doing is just eating the, your burger upside down like I do. I mean, no, fuck off. Like, like, no, no, because a bun has a, there's a bottom part of the bun. There's a top part of the bun. I'm not eating this upside down like the crazy person yeah but I, I layered it i layered it differently because i noticed that's how all the um uh, uh sandwich places sandwich shops do it, just do it. yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. layer it like that and i was like huh so i i did it and i was like I, it was a noticeable difference it was solid 
I enjoy it. Do you, do you sandwich oil? Negative, I do not. Mm. But I do toast the bun a little bit with, uh, then I slather that bitch with mayo. Do, do me a favor. Next time you go to the supermarket, if it's expensive costs up front, but you buy one little jar of it and it lasts forever, mm. do one of the boar's head uh, oil and vinegar with like, uh, I'll find the, 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 the exact image and okay. send it to you. You just, dr- you just put a little bit on that on the bread first. So it like soaks into the bread. And it just, dude, bro, it like takes the sandwich to like another level. <laughs> no, no. It's good. Like, I, I really like Santos. And then I, I did, re- I did think of one other thing that I think could improve my sandwich experience um, because I pack it or when I take them to work, they do taste mm. a little different because it's in a plastic baggie. I need those wax paper baggies. Like I've seen them or they're just like, it's like a brown bag. You just throw your sandwich in it. Yeah, that I feel like that would help keep it a little more crisp. I wrap mine in tin foil. Yeah, but what? Why not like a <laughs> tin foil? <laughs> yeah, why not a container, right? Like, I guess how big are the sandwiches? Sure. Like, I have a, I have like these plastic and metal like containers to like take to store food, but like just put your sandwich in there, and then you just take it home, you rinse it out, and then yeah. you have. A, this is true. That's well, the and sandwich, and then the sandwiches are the bigger shit away. ones. They're like yeah. the bread's like that, but it's not like the small little square you would get for like yeah, yeah. as an adolescent. There's got to be a, a sandwich carrying contraption that somebody has made. If not, then gentlemen, yeah. we've we've yeah yeah we have an idea. We've stumbled <laughs> on a we go to Shark Tank. Yeah. Uh, so, am I the only fat kid that does double meat? <sighs> He, I, yeah. I found out what really improves the sando is by having a mixture of meat. Yeah, a mixture of meat is good. If I do double meat, it starts to like overpower everything else in the sandwich that I, I'm kind of there for. So like I'm there for, especially if I go pick up a sandwich from a place, I want like all the produce. I want like just, cause I load it up, right? So like, I'm a big fan of Ike's. I'm assuming you guys have been Ike's. I actually haven't. So <laughs> I, I, I know like, bikes. I know they do yeah. everything. I guess. Yeah, you I follow get, them on Instagram, but I've yeah, actually done you it. can get like really perverted sandwiches there, where like they just put like crazy stuff in your sandwich. Like, uh, like you want mozzarella sticks in your sandwich? Sure, here you go. Right, but like you can you can order these sandwiches, and it's like the perfect blend of like it's not a lot of meat, but like if you load it up with like veggies and the bread, it's like the perfect combination. Um, side tangent: the first time I went to Ike's was in San Francisco. And I went, uh, not when I actually lived in San Francisco, but after the fact. So I was just like, oh man, I wish I had found this place when I lived here. But I went there for work. So I literally flew up from LA to San Francisco to do something in work. Uh, You know, know, that doesn't matter. It's not like a secret. Part of our, at the time, our studio had a, uh, a, um, a bigger studio in India. And so to get visas, the, you had to go to the, the Indian consulate in San Francisco. So I would go fly up to San Francisco, drop off all this paperwork for at the Indian consulate. And then I just sit there and wait all day until like the documentation was done. And then they gave me a bunch of like, um, uh, you know, visas and stuff. So I just would kill time in San Francisco. So this one time I went up there, I was like, man, I'm going to go, I'm finally going to do it. I'm going to Ike's. And so like, the consulates in one part of San Francisco, I Ike's is on like the other end of it. So like I'm taking, you know, the, the, the bus or the tram or whatever there. I walk and I get there and there's like a line out like the door. And I'm like, all right, this is a good sign. This is great. Get my sandwich. And of course, the first one I have to go like, I go all in. I'm like, yeah, give me that steak sandwich, like with the Godfather sauce, put mozzarella sticks in that bitch. Like, let's go. And like, I'm like, yeah, chips and a drink. Right. So I get like, and it was like 20 bucks right at the time because it's San Francisco. Right. But like, that you give the sandwich chips and and I eat this thing and it's like probably about like noon right and it's like I go into such a caloric like uh, overload that I'm just like I need to take a nap so I literally yeah, just took a nap true. and on in the streets of San Francisco just like on the sidewalk uh because I was just like so overloaded <laughs> with what I ate woke up and I was like all right I gotta go back to work uh, <laughs> I work I had to just get back to the consulate so like they're good they're good long story short they're good uh the one thing the one thing is like the bread is really good but I find that the bread is fresher up in San Francisco than it is down here because I think they transport it it's the only thing that sucks down here but anyways really good sandwiches but part of the thing is I don't want to overload it with double meat because I like there to be like a fine balance yeah between yeah. everything right 
uh i'm really i'm really big on mustard like i buy because they thankfully oliver's has a crazy mustard selection but i've been getting this uh like i really like this it's like this pretty sure it's german this german spicy mustard mm-hmm. so good dude like it, if for, like if you put too much it's like oh man Whew. It, it, it's not like it's burning but it gives me like that uh chinese hot mustard or it's like searing the nostrils I'm yes like, Ooh. but i i love mustard so that's one thing about my sandals i i buy different types of mustard throw them on there but it's awesome mustard. um yeah well which, what was the question for dalton well, before, Dalton, was there anything on sandwiches else that you did you want to explain to us the double meat and why you love it? Uh, I don't know because I'm a fat kid. I like to put <laughs> so I'll do like ham and turkey, and I'll put turkey on one bun, on one bread, ham on the other bread, and then I'll also load up with veggies. You know, I mean, I love tomatoes, good lettuce, yeah, gotta have the tomatoes, lettuce, pickles. I also videos. like to get those um like banana peppers, pepperoncinis, mm-hmm. slice mm-hmm. those up and mm-hmm. put them in there. Yeah. Um, cool. I also like ketchup on my ham sandwiches too. What? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Honestly, honestly, it makes sense from the stamp. It does, because it makes sense from the standpoint of like, I just imagine ham, if you view ham as just like a really long, thin hot dog, then sure, great. I just hate ham. I hate ham so much. <laughs> so good. It's so salty and unhealthy and oily. Oh wait! All right, so all right. Before we like jump off of, like the topic of Sandoz, <laughs> at my last job, United Market, they used to have uh, half salami Sandoz, like lettuce, salami, some mayo, mustard for like two fifty mm. or two forty eight or something. So it's prepackaged food at this point, even though they make it. So you don't pay tax on. It. So I would go buy like two of those or one. Like, oh my, like, this is cheap as hell. What like, same way. And then my coworker magically couldn't find a deli. I'm like, I do not find a fucking deli, bro. Like, it, yeah. it's a deli. They cut meat. So I couldn't find it. But somebody came back with this sandwich. I'm like, what the fuck is that? He's like, well, it's just, it's like a, it's like a poor boy, but they just, just add like every fucking meat in here. And it was like five bucks for the sandwich. It was like this thick. Like, it was, it was wild. So he he's, he's he was younger than me and you know money his money was a lot tighter. So he was like, oh I can load up on this. I'm like I get it one time, one time just to try. It. Yeah. Because like, you found something new, cool. I'm gonna try it. This looks like a deal. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> like, bro, it's like they put like it, it was like ham, uh, like probably bologna, turkey, oh, oh. chicken, salami. Like all the worst parts of like what they cut off and they threw it in there to make a sandwich. They just don't want to waste it. It was the most saltiest thing I've ever eaten. I I opened it up. I took out like yeah. chunks of food meat just so I could like eat it. I'm like just chugging water. I'm like this is oh my god. I never got it again. Never. But uh, yeah, that does not sound good. No, that no, was terrible actually. <laughs> but, so to the point when you add too much meat, it's just not like, yeah. yeah. Or that crazy variety of meat. The we meats have to complement each other. Transition. Yeah. Randall, you've seen Initial D, right? Yeah, of course. For, have you seen Initial D? Anime of the Racing. So there's this there's this cafe in LA that I want to go to. Um, what is it? Fucking, what's the... Um, what's the little shop called fujiwara right yeah so there's a a place in la called the fujiwara um cafe and they have a um an eight six outside that's dope i want to go there and they always have like fds and shit that's hanging out i wanted to buy a car dude well if i had a cool car i wouldn't do it (laughs) i'll still go with my (laughs) musta i I, I would go light Like, what'd you do with your car? Oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's stock, but, you know. <laughs> they have the, they have the I mean, two arcade games in there and a bunch of, like... Oh, Volume, shit. Initial D Volume 2 was a shit. That was so fun. That was so fun. I still watch it on Hulu as, if I'm bored. The, the cartoon? hmm Yeah. 
The one on Netflix. Haven't... Have you seen the one on Netflix? I've seen the full movie, like the live version. That yeah. was good. It all comes down to the tires. <laughs> like it was funny. Like they go through everything. Like when he's finally racing, like the Evo or whatever. It's gonna come down to the tires. Watch. I was like, what? It's like it's pure s- right now. Like pure skill. Pure skill. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was good. Side thing. Uh, all right. Question. Yeah. I don't like questions. Dalton's question. Let's discuss. Let's discuss the concept of requesting time off. <laughs> Prepare the others. Prepare the others. PTO. Oh oh oh! God. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. I've never heard that before. Saw it on TikTok last night. Wow. Yeah, Dalton, this was yours. Uh yeah, I don't know. Um, I just finding it annoying that, especially nowadays companies it's it's less of you know a time off for I, I don't know i just think it's funny how like companies think it's an option and then you know it's like i've already booked flights everything's planned we're gonna go so like i hope you're prepared so i learned a long time ago that when you request time off, it's a request and the employees don't have to give it. And I learned that when I worked at In and Out. <laughs> like I think Nick Fox like straight up said like, well, it's a request. I don't have to do it. But I'm like, well, I need it. Like, fine. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like that, I think that was like the interaction. Um, but because I've always like, man, <sighs> I've always worked in the in, in jobs where the sales crew is like three or four people mm-hmm. so requesting time off is like detrimental to like the actual fucking dog job like well fuck dude now like okay i guess i'll work here by myself like all day so i'd always feel guilty requesting time off um and oh, man so See, i don't though because i mean like, the amount i know we all work a lot so i mean especially yeah. when you used to work at your old job the amount that you work you know asking a week off i feel like isn't that much as i've gotten older as a human yes are deserve that so for me i never needed like weeks off like in my mid-20s i never needed like weeks off like but i always missed out on a lot of like weekend things like people like hey can you do this i'm like dude it's you're late you're asking me if i can like for all my friends and if anybody's listening to this you're a fucking idiot if you think i haven't worked a fucking saturday and a sunday for the past like 10 years so for you to like spring a weekend thing on me like yo bro come on let's go i'm like dude i need like a month in advance versus like a week you know i'm talking about like asking time off like six months in advance yeah, yeah well if you're asking six months in advance you don't get it and that's just like i'm going regardless yeah so that's what yeah, i'm yeah, referring yeah. to yeah, yeah. On, yeah obviously on the fly like a week advance i totally get it yeah. you know but with my last job i um they did pay time off and i remember i took like that first week off and i was like this is amazing <laughs> like i've never taken a week off from work like in my whole life at least for the longest time and i think i went to uh i'm not even sure if i did anything i think i just took the week off because like it's gonna overlap and i'm not gonna get it so i'm like i'll just take it and i was allowed two weeks off in the year one in you you, we would kind of plan them out like one here one here one here one here but until like my my second year in my last job like that was when I'm like I should request, but I was still terrified to ask for the request off. Like, yeah, I was yeah. still terrified because I have to literally walk up to the owner, the owner who sits right there who's an asshole eighty percent of the time, and ask him for time off. And usually it's like why? I'm like I just, what do you mean why, bro? Like I'm a slave here. <laughs> like Jesus Christ. He's like I want to get away from you, and have you pay me to get away from you? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but I think requesting time off is you need to do that. Like it's as you get older, that time off is just going to help you 
recharge, recharge, rejuvenate, whatever. With my schedule now, it's kind of all over the place, but in the middle of the week, if I didn't want to do shit for Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, no one's forcing me to. So I get like these mini breaks, but being self-employed on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm still doing shit. But I, oh, man, you need that time off. Like, yeah, man, fuck. Yeah, just time off is, it's, it's great. I should go fucking somewhere. What about you, Bert? Time off. Yeah, it's weird. So for me, if like I've seen, I've worked at a really big <laughs> studio, like 400 people. And so we would have like, PTO request meetings where all of like the department heads I would literally it was my job to go into because we had like a system you didn't have to go to your boss and request you request it you know via the computer right um and so I print out these reports that would just basically be the next month and then or you know maybe the current month that we're in and then like the next month right and I would for each I block out where people were requesting time off right um and as a council, we would review the PTO requests and we would approve, approve them or deny them, right? So we would try to do these things like in advance, right? But part of the problem is, cause it's like if, and the way that that studio was organized, it was different departments. So imagine like if, you know, the reason we would do this is we'd look, we're like, wait a second, why is this entire department asking? Like everyone would be out. I mean, nothing would be done in this department. We have to say no, right, to somebody. Mm-hmm. So um you know it's shitty it sucks so like that's to me where i go i get it, it's a request but i'm also with you know the, the level at least with the currently with the studio that i work right now and you know with the people under me i'm always like dude take the time that you need like request it as long as like you can give me enough advance heads up great right mm-hmm. but like we have certain certain um protocols in place where it's like when you're making a request it's like it's not i don't care where what you're doing with the time like i'm never going to ask why because that's just shitty it's like no you fucking i don't care take the time off the thing that i ask people to be in our in our studio is like understand the impact of the request and so by that i mean just yes. all you have to do is say mm-hmm. i'm going to be gone for these dates and these are the major things that are due during this time so like you're acknowledging the fact that like hey cool this is the date of the next big thing so it's just to think about like what that impact is on everyone else. But makes sense. I approve every, I mean, like, I don't think I've ever denied any PTO that comes across me because it's just like, fuck it. Like people, there's a guy at work who, eh, I'll be careful what I say, but like, let me, let me, let me, let me keep it general. The thing that I said to uh, a department was somebody was like having a really hard time focusing at work. Um, and to me it's like dude i'd rather you just go home i'd rather you go home and like rest and rejuvenate and like get your mind like clear than spend two hours at work doing nothing right like if you're sitting there trying to focus and you can't focus and you're just sitting there and you're and you're you're not doing anything productive just go home like you're not it's it's better for everyone if you leave right because you're not getting frustrated and you know uh, and then now I clearly understand that you've left and that nothing is being done, right? Not in a negative way, but like, okay, cool. Like I'm not, <clears throat> person has left. Yeah. So there's, I think obviously with like p- places of work where there's, so it's, it's weird. Cause Randy, you're talking about like the salesmanship thing in my head ago, I immediately was like, fuck dude. Like, yeah. Cause if you take time off, that's like not, cause that's the thing that I'm sorry. My t- tangential Bert is coming out, right? I'm gonna, I got to write some of these down. So, I, so. all three of us, obviously it would impact each place different. Because, yeah. Yes. You know, Bert has a constant production thing that's going on. Like if I were to qu- take time off right now, as it stands with my current situation, yeah, it would basically mean the store shut down for like half the week. And like yeah. no one's going to man the store, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing is like, if there's like, if you work at a place where like other departments are like involved or like other groups are like directly connected to like your stuff, then it's like, you just need to understand what that impact is. It's interesting on the sales thing, Randy, because this kind of goes with my po- my part where you, when you were saying, People come to you and just spur of the moment be like, hey, man, you want to like go to Tahoe for the weekend or you want to go to Vegas or like, hey, I plan this like boating trip or whatever. You're like, dude, I can't. What the fuck? I can't just drop what I'm doing. No. Right. You yeah. should know this. 
it's that plus the level of when people like ask me to do stuff and I'm like, and I go, yeah, yeah, sorry. Like to do that, I would need to take off time from work. And they're like, oh, okay. And like, as in like, (laughs) why don't you in my head? I'm like, no, no, no. Like what you're asking me to do is costing me money. Like that's the thing, like on top of whatever you're asking me to do, like granted we have PTO. So like, it starts to like shake out a little bit, but I'm with the sales thing, even more hyper. So like, not only are you you're missing the day, you know, hopefully if you have PTO, you're getting that PTO. But if you have like a commission job, you're also missing out on like any of those commissions. So it's like that's that's a big all right. That's a big, big one that you just hit the head on. Not that I and a lot of and let's say half of the times, and this was all in my mid-20s, like it's it, the invites just stopped happening because I've never mm-hmm. showed up. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I kind of like just phased out of, hey, I'm not in this group chat anymore. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you kind of go through it. It hurts your feelings a little bit, but at the end of the day, I pay my bills. My friends don't. Um, but it's, I would say, out of, out of, let's say I've gotten hit up 40 times in this span, just like spur of the moment, really fun stuff. Out of those 40, 20 seemed fun. Out of the out of the twenty, I probably have literally only gone to like five because we were, hey, this is an annual thing. I'm gonna request this time off. But it's like, man, especially especially at AT and T, especially when I worked at AT and T, did cell phones. If you take that time off, like fuck, dude, this hurts my paycheck. Like this hurts bad because I'm so dependent on commission, and if I'm not here, I'm not getting commission. I can't make sales. So, oh man, cell phone sales. Yeah. To request a time off was just like terrible, but I wasn't established enough or I didn't really understand like, Hey, you should take some time off, <laughs> go do something. Um, which I really wish I took advantage of when I was younger, but yeah, it is what it is. I mean, you get the, whatever I got fired or left the job, I always got on my vacation time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah here's, here's your 100 hours you took dick on. <laughs> yeah i think i'm up to like 300 jesus yeah, i really need to start taking that dude like my mom had so much pto and she just never did anything because she's like i don't know where to go you know like whatever because she's just yeah. managing the source place they told her like you gotta take time off like yeah. you have like they told her like i don't care if we just hang out in the apartment like you have to take a week off you have yeah. to take this time off because well, like, it's, it's a it's lot it's a reset or well, it, it won't reset, but it won't stop or it won't keep accruing. So. There's a point where it will stop rec- accruing, right? And then the other thing is like, because it, it represents a liability, like a risk to, this, to the company, right? Because mm-hmm. for the very reason of if your mom like retired or whatever, it's like they have to pay that all out, which could be in some cases like months worth of, your, you know, the, yeah. the, the thing. So part of it is like encouraging the PTO so there's not like this, this you know, looming uh cash out that's about to happen right right but yeah yeah cha-ching yeah you know, cha-ching. it was like four or five years ago but she's like yeah i need, I need to take like five weeks off this year i'm like what yeah, like, yeah. she's like yeah it's never been i'm like all right so i remember i when i was making more money i was just pony up I'm like here's some money like go visit your friend in texas or something you know mm, yeah so like i would try to like well because you know my parents are divorced, but it's just like they want to. Like, I know my mom wants to go do things, but it's that same mentality. It's like, well, what the fuck do I really want to do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, it's an effort, or I could sit around and do nothing. Yeah, and <laughs> just regret not doing anything when I go back to work on Monday. <laughs> yeah. All right, you got another one? I do, I do. Um, okay, so this is an interesting one that I was thinking about, um, and it it made me, depending on how you guys respond. I might send you all a movie. Um, so this is this is talking about director's cuts. So I think we all collectively, and by we all, I mean like society, for the most part goes, yeah, yeah, the Lord of the Rings extended editions are like the best version of like a, I'm going to include them in director's cut, let's just say extended version, but like yeah. extended version, right? Of, of a movie, because like it adds so much to it. You'll never go back and watch the theatrical versions. No, you can't. Uh, you can't, right? So I think we all we all agree that, right? Or if not, then you can probably. I'm curious if you don't, then like what the answer is, right? 
I'm really interested in hearing what are movies that like their theatrical version versus their extended version are so drastically different in regards to like you hated the theatrical version or maybe thought it was just meh but like the theatrical or the director's cut version actually makes it a good movie because I have one that I immediately go to which is I think the quintessential version of this but I'm curious before I lead the witness uh, too far. Um, so I really think of any. the director's cuts, I, it's, it, there's really only one that pops out of my head and I guess that's Sin City. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think I believe, you, didn't, you didn't necessarily like Sin City. The no, 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 no. I love Sin City. I went over to Zach's house and watched Sin City like 10 times. And like, even if I didn't even want to see him, I was just there because they had Sin City on DVD. Got it. And then, every time they would walk in, like, what are you doing? Like, oh, Randy's here. What are you going to watch? Sin City? Yep. I'm like, okay. Um, but I think, I think they're a pretty common there's director's cut, but it's like, you watch the director's cut so much and then you watch the theatrical version, like, huh, it's missing things. Like, huh, like, did they trim this for like TV or like, what's going on here? Uh, so my director's cuts, I'm not like drawn to go watch it, like a director's cut. Like if it's just one comes out, I'm like, I gotta watch this, it's amazing. I'm like, unless it was like Lord of the Rings. But if I happen to see the director's cut after the fact, then I will never go back and watch it theatrical version like ever again like it's just i i will not do it there's no point to it that's why some movies are so funny like talladega nights it was on netflix but what was the point of watching talladega nights because it wasn't the, wasn't the director's cut yeah, yeah yeah like there there's no point you know like you watch the director's cut there's so much more funnier shit in there that's kind of pushed the boundaries but then it's like when it's on netflix it's like i don't know you guys couldn't afford like the extra 20 minutes like i don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, well, it, yeah, it's really interesting because like Step Brothers was on Netflix, yeah, and I and I put it on, and I'm so used to like the you know whatever the Ultimate Sibling Edition, <laughs> and 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 it was on. And I was like, wait, no, they skipped a scene, and it yeah. was like then I just I stopped the movie because I was like, well, I own this, and I like put the real DVD in. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> they like, that's <laughs> yeah, like. Okay, like, we'll just like yeah, a lot of Will Ferrell shit with, has director cut because <laughs> Will Ferrell pushed the boundaries. Yeah, you watch Anchorman, <laughs> Tell the Good Night, you know, Step Brothers, like it's just, it's just funnier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what movie were you alluding to? Well, before I jump into it, Dalton, I know you're saying like you're thinking of trying to think of anything. If you don't, then that's fine. Like I know this well, is kind of an oddball question. So Gladiator, I mean, it's not much. Oh, more. interesting. I don't think I've ever seen the extended edition wow. of Gladiator. So they had it, like I said, it's not it's not anything like Lord of the Rings where it's like, you know, almost an hour long or longer yeah. or whatever it is. But they do have some other scenes that I feel like has a bit more of an emotional tide. Interesting. Has a little bit more of an emotional tide to the movie. Just like, for instance, after the first war scene, um, when Maximus is, you know, done, he goes through the... Um, like the the medical camp or whatever so everybody's you know just all injured and stuff Whoa. um and then he's like washing his hands I don't, was, I don't know if he's washing his hands in the theater theatrical one but i think he does i think i do remember that but okay, i don't so, remember him walking through like the wounded yeah so it's the it, it's this it's the scene that leads up to him washing his hands and it's just everybody you know like arms cut off legs cut off and all that shit whoa mm. yeah there's just a bit more scenes that add some more to the emotional mm-hmm I'll have to check that out then. I can't believe I've never seen that. It's the perfect segue because my movie is a Ridley Scott movie. And mm. most people, I think, right, when they hear this question, they're immediately going to go to Blade Runner, right? Because the theatrical version of Blade Runner was pretty bad. And, there, and Blade Runner has had multiple, like, the director's cut, the definitive cut, right? And, <laughs> and mainly because the theatrical, I don't know if anyone's ever seen the theatrical version of Blade Runner. But it's like the studio came in and like made all these choices and it was really bad. Like Harrison Ford has, does like VO throughout the entire thing. It has like this weird happy ending. It's like really f- weird, right? So like I get that. And I get why people prefer the other versions. That is not the Ridley Scott movie I'm talking about. I'm talking about the movie Kingdom of Heaven. It was his Crusader movie with Orlando yeah, Bloom. Little... Okay, yeah. And the theatrical version is like 
it's kind of meh it's like okay but it's just like it's actually i was like i don't know if i really like this at all because it just kind of ends and the it just seems kind of disjointed and i was just like yeah it was all right but whatever Linda blooms is typical little pussy person <laughs> um he doesn't play no, no but roles. kind of kind of yeah the theatrical version or i'm sorry the the extended version orlando bloom is not that orlando bloom, orlando bloom was like dope uh and he plays a completely different character and there's so much more to it like literally completely changes the movie where you're like you watch it and you're like oh 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 like it adds all this context <laughs> it adds all these scenes turns it way more into like a kind of game of thrones experience and you're just like putting all this stuff together it is hands down like i cannot think of like another movie where like the theatrical version because i think the theatrical version again was a situation where like the studio was like make another gladiator just, you need to make another gladiator and she's like yeah but i'm doing like this like sword and sandal epic where it's more about like all there's gonna be fights and stuff but like it's all about this this other the, there's more complexity to it and like they just trimmed it down for the theatrical and it just was like yeah mm -hmm. And then like the director's cut, because I just started rewatching again last night. Uh, it's just night and day. It's like night and day. Like it's such a phenomenal movie um, that oh, I, I, I don't understand how they could be so far apart, even though it's the same thing. Mm. So yeah. to me, that is a movie where if you're going to watch it, you have to watch the, or the extended version because that's actually the movie it's supposed to be as opposed to the theatrical one, which was just like, I don't know, butchered in editing. I've actually never seen Kingdom of Heaven. I, well, that, and this, this was the thing. It was like, I was like, well, I guess I have to send Randy and Dalton to the extended version. It's like three like, hours the, long, but it's- the, like, the main reason I never watched Kingdom of Heaven is because I didn't think Orlando Bloom was a strong enough character to be the lead guy. He, he cr I don't see he crushes it. He does phenomenal in it. Okay if you watch the extended version because it's there's way more nuance to it where like in the beginning he is a little bit like uh i don't know like not not i don't know but like he's 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 he's, he's troy orlando bloom no 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 he's like emo he's like super like melancholy and like yeah like it's <sighs> it's but but like in a good way like he's just kind of like he's just yeah. it, it builds up to like the end where you're like damn dude like you he really went on this like crazy journey and you like, yeah, I, I can't, I cannot, I cannot stress enough how the thoughts that you have, if you watch the theatrical version, you might be like, yeah, he's trying, but it's kind of like, it's trying too hard. And this is like kind of dumb. Yeah. See, that was, I really liked the, I liked the movie. It's just, or I have a hard time getting into Orlando Bloom's characters just because of his previous work. Previous work being Legolas and Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> mainly Pirates of the Caribbean. Got it. He's just so needy on Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, he is. He is pretty needy. The last this. couple was okay, but <laughs> uh, no, I hated the last. The, the last yeah. one got a Rotten Tomato score. I feel 30%. like I was about to get you fired up if I said Legolas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, um, speaking of movies, which we talk about a lot. Wait, wait, wait. Before we transition, Orlando Bloom. Have you guys seen The Outpost on Netflix? I have it queued up. I haven't watched it yet. No. So he's on that one. He's actually really good in there. He doesn't last long. Um, a little Spoilers. bit of a spoiler, but um, we watched the movie for a little while. Before. He's in it, dies 20 minutes in <laughs> Black Hawk Down. <laughs> I'm so excited to jump off this plane or this helicopter. Yes, yeah. of course, it's not really his fault, but um, anyways, watch the outpost. That one's really, really good, and he he does yeah. pretty good in that role. <laughs> so, um, is there like a handful of movies that you guys will watch just like? You stumble across it. You're like, I know this is a good movie, so I'll just watch it start to finish, no interruptions, like once a year. I have a handful of movies that I'll watch all year round. <laughs> I do that weekly. <laughs> like, uh, but, I have all these lists of movies and shows to watch, and yet I still keep watching the same shows. Well, like I said, that's just a good way to not get let down. <laughs> so, so this is a great question but do you want the i watch these all the time movie or do you want the movie that is yeah mm -hmm. you watch it once a year i, I watch it like once a year you know um I'll, I'll just lead off like uh for whatever reason like whenever i see i, I stumble across troy like i'll watch that start to finish 
uh, Legolas's character really pissed me off in that one. Or Legolas's character really pissed me off in that. Um, I would say Gladiator is one of them. You know, I'll watch that start to finish once a year. Uh, kind of fell off of watching Lord of the Rings extended versions once a year, uh, just because they're so fucking long and I've seen it so many times. Like, I could quote everything in my sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe Aliens 1. Hmm. Yeah. I've overdone the thing, but you know, I definitely got to get the thing in there. Yeah, yeah. You watched the a thing. Lot. I watched a lot of the thing. Yeah, but just kind of like this, like, uh, this is going to, oh, well, I want to hear your guys' thing, but then we'll go to a, a good question about another genre of movies. <laughs> you guys got a movie like that? Movies? I have a couple. One of them might surprise you uh, Moneyball. Interesting. Moneyball's a fucking good movie, and that's up there. That's really? there too. That's a really good movie. Like, oh, so good. It's once in a while, I'll really watch that one. Um, I don't watch as much as like other shows that I'll watch repeatedly, but yeah, Moneyball for sure. Yeah, it's a great one. There's there's quite a few. I'll like be looking for something. I go on just watch and I'll look for something. I see it and yeah, Forrest Gump or something. Yeah, Forrest Gump. I'll probably be watching that one soon, Netflix just because now. it was on Netflix. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just if I gotta put it in the DVD player, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> but i will <laughs> i'm desperate enough but yeah forest comes one it's like some movies are kind of hard to watch Apollo, you know what apollo oh no apollo 13 excuse me i think it, I, I mean i watched it and yeah it was yeah good. i don't think i've seen that i've seen that movie like probably the one or two times yeah let's watch apollo 18 <laughs> Is that the one where like they go and there's aliens on the moon? Like the alien spiders or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, oh, I'm gonna put that one down. That's a great one too. The like, what was it like? The untold truth of Apollo missions is why they really stopped. <laughs> spiders on the moon. The Christmas Story I watch once a year. Yeah. So uh, no, I stopped with the Christmas Story. I Stop. have to watch it at least one time on Christmas Day. I have to, dude, because like three networks play it all day. Yeah, we don't well, watch it. Least... We don't watch it consecutively or like from from start to finish. We'll like turn it on, watch the middle, and then be like, "All right, we're gonna do something." Come back right. on, like, "Oh, hey, look at the end," and then we'll like leave, and then like, "Oh, hey, there's the beginning." We've now seen it all. Growing up, <laughs> I demanded that we have that show on all day long. It's so funny. I mean, it was now good growing up. I'm like, it was I have good. to always watch it once. Here. Yeah here's here's my go-to's for once a year but then this started to make me think about movies that are like once every like five years where i go oh yeah this movie and i watch it and i forget how good it is so i'll start with like the the go-to's there's the christmas movie that i watch every year die hard every year it is the it is the that is the one christmas movie i make sure that i watch um the others like that are every year. It, the other hall or Halloween movie that I watch once a year is Trick or Treat. Um, and then like the just the other movies that inevitably happen is Three Hundred. Yeah, because it's like Three Hundred is not a movie where I need to watch it like all the time. But then I'll be like, oh yeah, I haven't watched Three Hundred in a while. I'll watch them like yeah, great. I think I've seen that like one time. Starship Troopers. Ooh yeah. Uh, that's another one where I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, and I'll watch it. And it'll be good. It's also Netflix. To learn more. Yeah. Tremors. For me, it's like a family movie. About Tremors, dude. I it's I own the entire Attack Pack kind of thing. I own all of them. <laughs> I love those so movies. Good. It's so good. And Tremors, I think, is a near perfect movie. You know what it's playing on right now? Because now I want to watch. It. Bert Bert left the series, right? Yeah, yeah. The, like, 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 did yeah, he yeah. die in the sixth movie, or did he actually just like leave? Nice, leave. That's stars. I think he died in the sixth movie, right? He does. Yeah. Finally, he's like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sixth one was pretty ridiculous, but I, I watched it. I enjoyed it because yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I'm curious. <laughs> and the other one is Jurassic Park. I'll watch Jurassic Park at least yeah. once a year. Yeah, because, yeah. Especially when it rains. As soon as it's like like the first year. rain of the year, I'll throw on Jurassic Park because that movie is just fucking solid. Let's watch World Dominion. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Oh my god, it's so ridiculous. You know what just came out on Netflix? I'm really excited. 
War of the Worlds. Oh yeah, Tom Cruise. Great movie. Movie. Yeah, it's a good one. I think I've seen that once, and I never went back. Yeah, it's a little difficult to watch in the fact, like, for at least for me, as the the little girl, it's mm. kind of annoying. But I mean, it's, but Tom Cruise being Tom Cruise, <laughs> I I enjoyed that movie. Like, I really, I you really mean running at the camera. He's always running. <laughs> All right. Can I, can I add a movie to my yearly? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are yeah. you guys Tom Cruise fans? Yeah, I th- I would say so. Yeah. Have you seen the movie Days of Thunder? Negative. No. <laughs> so he... you fan? Yeah. Nope. Uh, who else is it? It's Robert Duvall, Nicole okay. Kidman, obviously. Um, but he's a um, he used to rock, rock. He used to race stock cars, and then now he went to NASCAR or something, and he gets injured. Um, Randy Quaid's in it. Quaid. It's an old movie from the nineties, but yeah, he is. it's you kind know, of like a Top Gun. You know, he falls in yeah. love with the lady or whatever, but. It's a really cool movie. Yeah, you know, I could do a Jerry Maguire. Uh, I'll watch that start to finish. Sounds good. Um, Big Fish. Can't believe I forgot that off my list. Big Fish. Uh, I'll get seen that. It's Ewan McGregor. It's a uh, fuck. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot the guy's name. The guy who did Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, Tim Burton. Yeah, even though Tim Burton didn't have shit to do with Night Before <laughs> Before Christmas. <laughs> put his name on it so people would watch it <laughs> that's the crazy part it was like timber but like that movie yeah and uh surprisingly this might throw you guys for a loop uh secondhand lions what is that old yeah, one i don't know Haley no joel clue. has Haley joel i think robin okay. ball and then michael oh Caine. yeah and michael kane <laughs> okay i don't think i ever saw it it's, it's good, a huh? it's 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 one of those kind of like little feel-good hmm. movies got a break down these barriers with this old man love me type mm-hmm. shit mm-hmm. stupid mother yeah yeah it's a good one that's good one that's a good one okay segue hold on before we segue <laughs> this is a good topic this is a great topic these are my these are i only gave two because i keep going but these are two movies that i don't watch every year i probably watch these once every like four or five years and i go that's right i fucking love this movie and then I'll like forget about it again, like not in a negative way, but like no, nah, I don't need to watch it. I kind of I get it in, in yeah. long distance. First one, the Thirteenth Warrior with Antonio Banderas. I've only watched like the first twenty minutes of that movie. It's basically Beowulf, the movie, right? But like not the 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 saga, the epic, mm-hmm. but it's like the same plot. That is a movie that it's like I'll watch. I'm like, yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> cool great and then like i'm good i don't want you know i don't watch it every year but you know a couple years will go by and i'm like oh yeah i'm gonna watch this same thing with uh the mummy oh yeah the same the same composer for for both but i'll do like an entire mummy run i'm like oh yeah yeah the mummy one mummy two um (laughs) and then the third the third the third (laughs) one is garbage (laughs) <laughs> i'll do my mommy run i know they're... but you're on the wrong side of the river the the other one that will probably surprise you eight legged freaks really with david arquette like, yeah 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 you eight legged freaks it's Jeez. such a cheesy terrible movie it's like scarlett johansson when she's like super young and uh and it's like Jan. terrible it's a terrible movie but i enjoy it so much uh really and i'll and i won't watch it for like years then i'll watch it again i'll be like oh yeah 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 have you guys seen Ready to Rumble? No. I want to see. Who's in that? Yes, I have. David Arquette wants to be a pro wrestler, right? Yeah, they, him and his buddy want to be a pro wrestler. And who is it? Um, David Arquette, Scott Can, Oliver Platt. Oliver Platt's yeah. like their um, idol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should, but you would. I think you'd really like that movie. It's, it's a, called it's a, what? Ready to Rumble. Uh, it's a it's a silly movie, but it's funny. Yeah, it's like eight legged freaks, but with wrestling. Nice. Okay. But the no. other the other one uh, for me, sorry, I'm you guys got me talking about movies that I actually enjoy, <laughs> which is crazy because normally I hate fucking movies nowadays. Is I, I won't watch it every year, but then I'll like it'll be a couple years. I'll be like, oh yeah, then I'll watch the entire series. Scream. I fucking love the mm, Scream series. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that movie series as a whole. I think holds up except for the third one's a little a little wonky but like i'll start 
one and then I'll go to two and then I'll go to three and then I'll go to the scream. And then, I'll, then I finally just watched the newest one. And it's like, yeah, I just, they're consistently good. Um, and they were, the, the thing that I love about it is they film scream the first one in Santa Rosa. And so there's a lot of like at the high school, the Santa Rosa high school. So it's crazy to me that in like the most recent one, everyone has 707 phone numbers area codes on their phones oh that's dope yeah that's cool that's cool sorry but randy you in, in, done with movies or uh, well, with this conversation i know i feel uh, like this is a great topic i mean i just watched happy gilmore <laughs> like, interesting because, interesting like, like, i don't I, know i don't know how i feel about going back to the old adam sandler movies do they hold up I mean, the price is wrong, bitch. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good. Sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I think about it like the movies we all know, but they're funny. But I think of some like memes that I see. Like you'll sure. see uh, the actor who plays Shooter McGavin standing next to the Tiger Woods in real life in a picture, and you're like, look at Tiger standing next to the greatest golfer of all time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, and so I think about that. I was like. Some of the some of the jokes are funny. I mean, water like you go back and watch Waterboy once every now and then. Like, Waterboy, I'll do. Yeah, I, the only one I, I of the big three that he did it was like Waterboy, Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison. Billy Madison was like my least favorite. Yeah, I don't disagree. With that. It was. Would you not throw Big Daddy in the big three? Yeah, the big four. Because it was like I know that was like ninety nine, ninety eight, but <clears throat> I. I feel like he was transitioning from a uh, playful, happy himself to going to uh, Big Daddy because it was more of like a, it was funny, but more of like a serious thing. You know, then he started yeah. transitioning to other stuff. But now Adam Sandler movies are just like a hit or a miss, like for real. Like it's like, let's just, here's $25 million, <laughs> make a but- movie. Okay. <laughs> At least yeah. Adam Sandler is still Adam Sandler, and he's not like, yeah, going you know big ego and all this shit. And... I love that the one thing about Adam Sandler, the guy you you can almost find that guy just anywhere, just playing to pick up basketball with random people. Yeah, <laughs> just like I love a picture of him just walking down the street, basketball shorts, and just rolls up like the play. Like like, okay. <laughs> They're like, oh man, there's a multi-millionaire playing basketball with us, and he's actually pretty good. Because they have pictures of him at like Disneyland and stuff, and he's just in line, you know, he doesn't have security and this big entourage following him around. Yeah. So what was it? Um the Kardashians or whatever. They went to Disneyland and they literally shut like they have a video of the teacups and mm-hmm. nobody could ride the teacups for like 40 minutes because they were riding it and shit and people were getting pissed. Like, yeah, I, would, stuff. I that would annoy the fuck out of me. <laughs> like, yeah. That, like, that's like, yeah. And who's, yeah. Um, who's. Best gangster movie American Gangster, hands down. <laughs> Mic drop. I'm sticking to it. I don't even care if I think about anything else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know I've watched a lot, and I'm not going to say uh, Goodfellas because that's just overplayed at this sure. point. Is Training Day a gangster movie? I don't think so. It's like a crime movie. Yeah. It's tough. It's a tough one. I, you know, I, I brought this, I brought this up and I, I mentioned it, but I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't even know like like how many gangster movies I've watched recently. Yeah. Well, you guys, you guys are both wrong. I'm sorry. Well, what would be hold on, what would be considered a gangster movie. well american gangster for one well right but like would training day be a gangster movie though because that's I mean, what we're saying yeah. but it, would the movie it's casino, like a corruption movie but would casino be a gangster movie anything yeah. robert de niro in is that a gangster movie <laughs> i would say casino is a gangster movie because the mob is involved mm-hmm. that's that's the thing right but you're both wrong I did blood money it. What's Blood Money? I guess you need to go check it out because it's the greatest <laughs> gangster movie ever. Made. Like, I did like Black Mass. You should look it up right now. Okay. <laughs> what about Pulp Fiction? Nope. I want to wait till Randy looks up Blood Money. God. 
Pulp Fiction. That's a good one. Pulp Fiction I mean, is a good one. I don't know if it's a, a crime, like a mo- a gangster movie though. It says mafia. It's in a category of mafia. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. Let's watch the new Avatar movie. That's a gangster Money. movie. How slow is your phone? Interesting. I'm just getting there. Hmm. Um. What was that? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till it gets it. What was that Christmas movie that Randall sent us with the dogs? Oh. Uh, Would that be considered a gangster movie? Because the the, I mean, the gangster John... dudes are robbing the house. If so, then that's my favorite gangster. Am movie. I looking at the right movie? The one that was made in 2017. No, like, 20, 2012. Oh my! Like, oh man, because John Cusack's in it, man. I don't no, know. <laughs> like, no, no. I was like, dude, you're Blood Money, twenty twenty or twenty twelve. God damn, dude, it's, it's not popping up on IMDb. Hmm. Let me share my screen then. Can I share um, my screen? Yeah. Oh, here it is. Oh god! <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! Damn, that movie's that old? Oh my god, that's crazy. Fuck you. <laughs> it finally popped up when I put it on one word. Oh my god, that's so funny. You, <laughs> so is it only movies or is it TV shows too? Let's expand it because fuck it. Peaky, I would throw <laughs> Peaky Blinders in there then. Oh, well, I mean, if we're just going to swing for home runs, yeah, Peaky Blinders is awesome. And then they're... They're coming out with their final season, I think. I think it or it's just or no, it didn't come out yet because I haven't watched it. Um, I, it would be uh, I think they're doing a movie too, or maybe the final season is just going to be a movie. Are they really? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I'll watch it. The Peaky Blinders is fucking great, and a big thing about Peaky Blinders is their accents are completely different than everything else. That was the one some people said like really helped the show. Oi! Good show, good show, good show. Or have you seen it? I have not yet, but I'm really intrigued because you guys have mentioned it multiple times. So I really like it. I think I think I would like it. Season three was oh man, that was a tough one. Doctor Grant's in it. Oh really? Doctor Grant. I just call him Doctor Grant forever. (laughs) That's his name to me. You know, Doctor Grant was. what is it? We are the wilder people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was Dude, that's such movie. a great movie. Ricky yeah. Baker. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that was good. Uh, gangster movies <laughs> or <Yeah>. shows. <laughs> I'm gonna lean on you guys for this one. Uh, I don't. I, I yeah. Don't really have one, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is your question. <laughs> oh man, because I watched so much stuff. Yeah, now let's just let's just bypass it. What else you got? Dalton? Yeah, anything? Mm, I think Actually, I do have another one. I have I have one, I have two others, but they're minor, but I want to hear from one of you guys. Yeah. Um nothing to do with movies, completely segueing from life as we know it. Uh do you Definitely. guys have a specific day that you clean your house or do things? Whatever I would day say, I'm not feeling lazy. <laughs> That's a solid answer. Yeah. I would say probably every two weeks, like I'll go through, I'll do like I'll steam the floors, I'll clean the bathroom. Bathrooms, you know, half assedly wipe things down, vacuum. I would actually I vacuum a lot more often, but yeah, I mean just every Sunday. Every Every Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, I'll do I'll do vacuuming, clean the kitchen, clean the stove, clean the sinks, clean the toilets. I don't clean the tub every week. Um, and then every like other week, I'll try and like do like the Swiffer. So I'm actually picking up not stuff and anything that the uh, the vacuuming didn't get. Yeah. Do my laundry, do all my my folding of my clothes. Um, the one thing that I realized I haven't been doing, and today is like the day I was like, oh shit, I need to do this. With all that said, all that cleaning that I do, I never dust because dusting is yes. like the one thing that I always forget to do. So like today was the day where I was like, oh, shit, I need to dust. I got dust all over a lot of stuff. Yeah. And sometimes like I know I should pick this up and dust, but maybe I'll just dust around it. <laughs> dust your hair. So much hair. My cat. Oh, dude. I So, uh, you know, my, my, my Dyson vacuum or whatever um, that you stick on the wall. 
all it is is just picks up Morty's hair. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know how a fucking cat sheds this much and still looks like how he does, but it's just like clumps and clumps of hair. Just does this hair get knotted? Uh, it's it's gotten pretty bad in the past, and I pulled on it a bunch and pulled on it a bunch and pulled on it a bunch, so it finally just kind of like died and we have to cut. We have to cut all these because it'll get so knotted and like, yeah, just it is hell of long hair. Yeah, like I think Morty's hair wouldn't get knotted if he actually like <laughs> upkept his his fur. Well, if you <laughs> brush him too, but past. Ollie won't let him let us touch him with the brush. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Really sure. All right, your miners. My miners, sorry, I'm just buying you guys the Kingdom of uh, Heaven director's <laughs> packs and I'm shipping them to your house. So give me one second. Randy's is on his way, and Dalton's is. I moved. Oh, did you move? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, thank God! Don't scare <laughs> me like that. I literally just clicked confirm. It's like three bar or whatever, but okay. Um, you guys talk about Elden fucking Ring all the Ooh, goddamn fucking yeah. time. Yeah, let's talk about Elden Ring. So yeah. you guys can talk about Elden Ring while I'm completely confused for the next five minutes. I don't have much more to say. I've been playing that much. I finally be. Uh, what's her fucking name? Dude, I would play like three or four times. I'd get really pissed and I'd have to turn it off. I've never raged so hard in a game in so long. So I've been watching uh, videos on people struggling with Melania and then watching a video of a guy that says, let me solo her. And watching this. Because they're like, so there's a guy named Let Me Solo. He named himself Let Me Solo Her because he face Melania 242 times mm. before he beat her. <laughs> it's probably about me. And which is crazy. It was just that's be, insane. Uh, it's crazy to me. But he beat her to the point where he knows everything and now he can perfect her without getting hit. Oh wow. And so what happens is like you can put summon signs and people can summon you to help them fight. But the thing is with mine, I beat her on the third try. So half the shit that she does, I've never seen. Let me ask. Oh, okay, interesting. So when, when you're hitting her, how many hit points were you getting? A lot. Like so I was only getting about 13, 1200. So here like I, now here's one thing that I do I do notice. I'm wearing like jacked up armor. I'm all my stuff is like I got a lot of defensive room, like defensive talismans on. I have all these things. Yeah. So yes, the first time she fucking killed me like in one hit. The second time she got me really fast. The other time I was just kind of like stepping back a little bit. I would kind of like whatever, blah blah. And then she would just be attacking my mimic, and I then I just like it was. I remember like it was yesterday. Like we just ran up, we just beat the shit out of her, like double blood loss. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh cool. In second form. Still have like ninety percent of my mimics still, or half of them, and then we just did the same thing. We just beat the shit out of her. Like <laughs> everything happened so fast, and I was just like, I wish I recorded this because I have mm. no idea. Like every since is the hardest boss, and I beat her the third try. So, You're on the Xbox though, right? Yeah. Oh, but it's not the connect, right? I did it. I I could have because with I, the I just, old with yeah. the old Xbox, anytime you did something dope, you could just yell out Xbox, record that. And it yeah. would record it for you. Yeah, but it's. The I'm gonna new start one, right? using the game bar. When yeah, I, yeah, yeah. When I, I'm gonna use the game bar when I uh, play on my Xbox X because I just use the Xbox companion app when I'm at work. So but she, it's like oh, she man. had that move where she would go up and she'd like lunge at you, slash you three times, lunge at you again, slash you at three times, and then jump back up and lunge even harder and slash three times, and that move would just fuck me up so what because even if i was able to survive that she would gain just about all of her health back and i'd have to try to refill my health and i couldn't do it and it was just getting me. so bird every time this character hits you she gains health okay. <laughs> got it so she's like the most broken like <laughs> boss in the game if it was Alleg- one of the allegedly other, if it was one or the other it would have been a lot easier Mm-hmm. But the fact that like she can hit, she can, and my I had a lot of health. I had almost two thousand, you know, like a two thousand health bar. Yeah. And the fact that she can just it, pretty much kill you with this one move was really. So annoying. what I what I noticed with the uh, the let me solo, um, I noticed that 
when she does the lunging attack and she does like the the swipe right when she gets here there it's like you almost have to pause another second then do a roll yeah pause two seconds then do another roll then pause like two or three seconds to do another roll like it was just very interesting to watch him fight it was it was that last slash that gets you kids or gets me because i watched a video guy and it made sense as long as you have a lot of room when she goes up to do it just start running back hella far yeah oh yeah oh yeah that's what i did the first two won't hit you yeah and then you have to roll into her on the third one yeah that was my problem i could never time it well enough to yeah. where she wouldn't hit me from what i remember on the third try i i because the slashes were coming so fast i just ran away like all right and then once she was and i'm not gonna lie she was bunched up next to a fucking wall when we beat the shit out of her so that like, helps because she can't like run, she couldn't she move so that her being next to a wall like help and then we broke her stance that was the other thing. And then you beat, then we, you know, like, oh my God. So is the game just about trying to glitch out these bosses to beat them? <laughs> Pretty much. No, but some people have found uh, glitches to beat them. Like, so for an example, I watched this one guy. He was like, you can kill Milani with a projectile. I know it's like not the funnest way, but you can do it. Because if you, you just sit there forever and just keep. Well, beating. you shoot at her. If you shoot at her directly, um, she's programmed to just dodge everything. Mm hmm. But it's like, if you, the guy was like, if you look to her at an angle, like she's still in your peripheral and you load up the jar cannon, a second you do the jar cannon, you lock onto her and cause he, he loads up like this away and then shoots at you like that. You can kill her that way. And I was like, it kind of takes forever. I mean, but whatever. <laughs> like, he's like, I beat her. <laughs> I just seems so like, I don't know. Not rewarding. Um, no, I mean, look, here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing. I, I was about to go off with this whole tangent about like, how the fuck are you playing this game if it just seems so like grueling and like unsatisfying? That's the thing. Most of it wasn't. Most of the game is a lot of fun. And once you're leveled up to a good point and your weapons are leveled up, then it's, you know, you're not getting your ass beat every five seconds. I, I, rage, I rage pretty hard at one of the trees. It was. Like one of the trees in my app, like ugh, whatever. It's still it's still challenging, but it's not like when you work first walk out of the in the world and you go to that dude on the horse and he just hits you and you're like really the introduction dry. to a Dark Souls game. <laughs> okay, sorry, about what were you saying? No, no, no. I mean that's the thing, it's like it sounds challenging, and I was about to like rant about it, but it's like, you know what? Like, I think it's just different degrees, right? Like Dalton, you and I were playing like Age of Empires, and we played like on like a harder difficulty and was like damn dude we want to like rematch because it was like like you want to try and figure out that map it. was fucked the map was fucking stupid and like i'll be playing dawn of war with evan uh playing a, a lot of that with him recently and like we've been slowly upping like the, the the difficulty of the ai and like the last game we just like fucking got wrecked like just destroyed but it was like so much fun playing regardless so i think that's the thing is like if you have fun despite the uh the frustrations then yeah you know it makes sense it makes sense because the world's gorgeous there's lots to do lots to kill everything wants to kill you um there's a lot of side quests and stuff there's a lot of shit that i'm trying to do with the journey too and my guy is too over overpowered like yeah. i think my guy is so overpowered i need to be on like journey three <laughs> like that's how it like i mean with the exception of a crucible night that was really pissing me off that i took me like 15 tries and i was like dude like i think that's how people right speed run it through they're going they're going to like the ng2 or ng1 or whatever well they well, they glitched the game yeah. like apparently they there was a mod there was a mod you could buy to mod the game <laughs> like i'm like huh, I, don't, I don't have a pc so i can't do it but i was like yeah. but i'm just going through and i mean it's all pretty good right now like but I'm finding this lack of direction. I'm like, man, I don't know. I can, I want to do this right now, but I don't want to do this right now. But I want to do this right now, but I should do this right now. But I'm going to do this right now, but there's no dragon here. I don't know why, but I'm going to do this right now. <laughs> like, that's kind of, it's, that's why I'm like, I'll, like what I said yesterday, like, I'll just start recording me fighting bosses really quick. Because it's just, I can't wait to get to Melania. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I should murk her so fast. Like, it's not even funny. With the help of my mimic here. Fuck that bitch. Yeah. 
I watched this dude on YouTube. He had like the smallest bit of health. Um, he had a talisman where it's like the less armor you had on, the more you get um, physical negate. Mm-hmm. And he beat her without getting touched once. Yeah. Like this bitch. Yeah. I um yeah. I have I have a vastly negate physical advantage talisman on. Just because I don't yeah. Bert, you should play it. I think you would like it. I think you would. You know, maybe on Xbox. On Xbox, yeah, but it's cross platform, right? I don't think so. There's no point. There's really no I don't know. I've never played multiplayer. I've never asked like summoned anybody or anything. I've tried. Um yeah. I'm trying to get I'm trying I'm trying to get people to summon me so I can go help them when I play, but see, sense. but that's the thing. It's not like you can run around the whole map with them and do a bunch of stuff. No, it's limited to like a certain like area. Yeah. Hmm. But I don't need that. I just want to go help and beat the boss and I'll like, leave. Yeah, yeah. But... I'm playing a ton of Dawn of War. It's a Warhammer RTS game. That's super fun. Um is it, so you should all RTS. come join me. Yeah. I wanted a segue because I re- I saw something on Randall's YouTube that Ooh. he played and <laughs> Sea of Thieves. Oh, Sea of Thieves. Yeah, I think we that's cross platform. We could all play that. Mm-hmm. It was sea uh, of is really fun. It was slow, man. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go back, but if you guys play, I'll play. I don't like. All right, so tell me this. Obviously, you played them. I have not played not, it. Yet. I haven't played oh. like a ton, ton, but I've. But you play, you play longer than me. I only played for that hour and a half. But it was um, interesting because I couldn't do, or maybe I wasn't reading it right, but I couldn't do two missions at the same time. Like, oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. I, so, I, re- I, don't know, I don't know if I played much more than an hour and a half, maybe a couple hours. Yeah, but. so it was, that was very, I'm like, okay, I just did this whole thing. Now I wanted to start a new mission, but then I got rid of my old mission, even though I completed it or I, I got the items for it I just didn't deliver it and it completely erased my mission the thing that I did took the item out of my inventory and I was like well oh, that's kind of oh, stupid that's and, I, and then I was like man if they're are they really stretching this um this 25 gig download game like I can only do one mission at a time like go back and forth back and forth back and forth it was basically like and you have to sail everywhere that was one thing which is not it's fine, but it reminded me of Wind Waker before mm. you actually got like the uh, Wind Ballard to like put you in different portions of the map. Like, bro, I gotta like do this. Like, it's slow time. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it was interesting to play for what it was. I know you can. There's a lot you can do in it. But if you guys go, like, I'll jump. I'll I'm gonna. I'm gonna re. Fresh. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I can download it. It's, it's on Game Pass. <laughs> it's like, I'm not saying I really, like, I really want to go through. Uh, this, yeah, well, I'll talk about that later. I don't know. I'm down to play a game. We always need to play a game together, right? Randall can hook up Tony's computer and we can all play Age of Empires. We play Age of Empires. We could do, we could do ODST campaign. Uh, we could, uh, you know, I'm still, I'm st- I'll say it. Uh, State of Decay 2. We can build a zombie. I know we're probably sick of zombies at this point, but. We could do a zombie survival together and it's like progressive right like it oh, keeps saying world war z <laughs> well, that's not progressive that's like, <laughs> that's like <laughs> uh i mean yeah state, state of decay 2 is on uh uh past i think so yeah. don't they have like state of decay like judgment yeah I something so. like that yeah it's also halo uh, yeah we all played halo once we did i was very drunk but then I beat the battle pass, so now I'm good. I, I I got the battle pass. I played like a few matches. I'm terrible right now, and I'm just just went back to over. <laughs> like, well, co op co op campaign is supposed to come out this season at some point. Well, then I will 100 percent just get right back into it. But we also could play lawnmower simulator, and you know just <laughs> okay. Well, company. we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe when they, that shit first came You guys not like out. simulators? You don't like simulators? Do you like platform games? No. That's no. It's a big fat no for me. No platformers. Uh, simulators maybe. Depends. Depends what it is. Star Wars. 
I think it's just called an RPG that we need to play. I need to get you guys the next steps for this LOTR thing so we can start it because I think it's going to oh, yeah. happen. But yeah. Tommy, Are we done with Goblin Quests? There's one final part that we needed to do, but I mean, I just need to get the Lord of the Rings thing set up so we can just start that. Uh, man. I think so. Yeah. We got another topic? I think, I guess, I think the topic is time for lunch. What are you going to get for lunch? I'm going to eat leftovers. <laughs> what, what are you gonna eat though i mean uh it's i made uh like ground chicken mm-hmm. meatballs and spaghetti sauce so i'm gonna do that over some rice sounds yummy yeah i mean yeah marinara or red sauce over rice with meat yeah it's always good yeah it's, it's good yeah. just rice in general yeah. just rice in general it's good. I love rice yeah like that burger that mcdonald's was good but I'm already feeling that sluggish effects. Yeah, that's what I think. So I gotta like chug more water. I'm just gonna walk around, do some chores, get get myself active. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about taking a walk around my park, but we have a baseball game today, and then yeah, I have to go to Richmond after. It sucks. Uh, yeah, normally I don't say it sucks, but it was either it got we got moved from last night to today, which was like whatever. And then it was like, all right, I can do it first thing this morning, but then I can't record. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, I don't feel like we put it off too long. So, you know, rather record. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. We'll appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, we're here. Yeah. Uh, so what are you yeah. having for lunch, Randy? I don't know. Probably not going to eat until like after the game because I already ate. That makes sense. Yeah, it's just weird because the game's at two. You gotta be there at one, but it's like I'm like things are just thrown off now because of uh truthfully just eating McDonald's breakfast because it's all the um the preservatives or whatever makes me feel a little bit more fuller. Yeah. Whereas like if I were to make breakfast here, I'd probably be hungry in like 30 minutes. Yeah. What are you gonna do for lunch? Panda. <laughs> you got me hungry for panda now. <laughs> You know the Mex- the Chinese restaurants do like lunch deals, you know. Yeah, I know. Sarah's not a huge fan of Chinese Chinese. Nah, panda. <laughs> that's like wild. <laughs> oh, dude, that's funny. That's funny. Um, on another topic, you guys should definitely, you're probably not, but I'm suggesting that you should, but you won't, uh, go see Doctor Strange. I I actually really want to. I just don't have I normally don't have time, but I can try it for it. next weekend. I yeah, enjoyed it a lot. I saw it twice. Really? Nice. Yeah, very. I mean, without giving spoilers away, Bruce Campbell's in it. Yeah, yeah. It's a Sam Raimi movie, so. <laughs> it's so good. I would hope so. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Campbell's so fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. Did I tell you how I met him? No, you didn't. I played, I played Risk with him. What? Yeah, yeah, my buddy across the street is his son, so I got to meet him and play Risk, and he's that funny in person. Yeah. God damn, lucky bastard! Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Risk. All right, Jen. So, well, peace. Jar of the mess. Jar of the mess. Adios.